Hello, Gary Stearman. Time for another Prophecy in the News Daily Update. It is Monday, August the 6th, and I'm making this on August the 3rd uh, for release on Monday. We've been talking about the possibility of war in the Middle East, and, and I'm looking at a live news report from Debka File, uh, which begins, United States, Israeli, Saudi, and Iranian war preparations are on fast forward. Uh, and Debka File then d discloses a few of the details about what they are calling the agonizing decisions that are ahead in the next few weeks. United States uh, Secretary of Defense Leon uh, Panetta uh, is on a, an inspection tour to make sure that United States uh, and Middle East uh, forces are in sync with each other, that everything is laid out according to battle plan. And here's a sentence that's interesting. Its timeline is now pared down to weeks because Iran's ongoing mega fortifications threaten to make its nuclear facilities indestructible, even by American super weapons. And so uh, we've been uh, stalling and stalling for months now. Uh, the Israelis have wanted to go ahead and destroy uh, the Iranian nuclear capability, uh, allowing Iran, uh, over a certain time period, to harden up its facilities. According to Debka File, even American superweapons will be unable uh, to wipe them out. At the same time, we have a quickening war in Syria. I'm looking here at another Debka File release, Anti-Israel Attacks to Mount in Sync with Syrian War and looming strike in Iran. And so the powers that be are trying to time the events of two unfolding wars, one in Syria, one in Iran, and the best laid plans of mice and men could go <laughs> very much astray. And uh, here's the, uh, the opening uh, from this particular report. The, attacks, the tactics Iran, Syria, and Hezbollah have set out for escalating their terrorist attacks on Israel differentiate between local and high-value strategic targets. So the enemy is focusing and, and separating its goals in Israel. There are local targets, there are strategic targets. They have now decided to keep up the assaults on the latter to keep pace with the worsening war situation in Syria and the approach of an attack on Iran's nuclear program. This is reported by Debka Files intelligence and counter-terror sources. Iranian terror planners classify the blowing up of the Bulgarian bus, and you remember that back on Wednesday, July 18th, uh, there was a terrorist attack on a uh, bus carrying Israelis in Bulgaria as a local focus of attack, notwithstanding its success in killing at least seven Israelis and wounding more than 30. So here we get a little insight into the thinking of Hezbollah. Uh, for them, a local attack is any terrorist attack anywhere. A strategic attack would be waged against key points in Israel. And this is fascinating to me because now we, we see, I think, a unique situation in which we have two war fronts developing uh, concurrently. We have uh, a war front in Syria, which is compounded by the fact that Hezbollah is going after Syria's chemical and biological weapons. We have a, another war front over in Iran, which is compounded by the need to wipe out those nuclear weapons quickly before they are so hardened up that nobody can destroy them. In the meanwhile, uh, we have Benjamin Netanyahu, who has said for months, we've got to take out uh, the nuclear facilities in Israel. What's going to happen? Of course, God only knows. And it is his territory. All through uh, the Old Testament prophecy, we see prophecies concerning the countries of the Middle East in the latter days, and we speak about this day after day after day. We have Damascus as a top location. Concerning Damascus, Hamath is confounded, and Arpad, for they have heard evil tidings, and they're faint-hearted. Now, this is a latter-day prophecy in Jeremiah uh, 49, beginning in, in uh, verse 23. 
There is sorrow on the sea. It cannot be quiet. I, I don't know what that might mean, but you know, it's interesting. The Russian Navy is in Tartus now, and they have virtually located their entire Navy in the Eastern Mediterranean, along with, accompanied by American uh, tactical uh, ships, the uh, United States uh, uh, nuclear aircraft carrier John Stennis is in the Middle East, the Ronald Reagan is in the Arabian Sea, and as we have said, uh, the uh, Truman, the, the, the nuclear aircraft carrier Truman is in the Persian Gulf. With all of uh, its flotilla of support vessels and the big boomers, that is the nuclear submarines that are carrying ICBMs. And we have this little sentence, there is sorrow on the sea, it cannot be quiet. Damascus is waxed feeble, and turneth herself to flee, and fear hath seized upon her. Anguish and sorrows have taken her as a woman in travail. Could that possibly be referring to something in the near future, or something that's happening right now? You be the judge. Again, you can read it for yourself in Jeremiah 49, starting in verse 23. How is the city of praise not left, the city of my joy? Therefore her young men shall fall in her streets, and all the men of war shall be cut off in that day, saith the Lord of hosts. And again, this is about a war in Syria surrounding the city of Damascus. Hmm, what can I say? Pick up your daily newspaper. And finally, in verse 27, And I will kindle a fire in the wall of Damascus, hmm. and it shall consume the palaces of Ben-Hadad, the sons of Hadad. In other words, those who populate uh, Damascus or Syria in general, as we have come to call it uh, in the 21st, 20th and 21st centuries. And so uh, we see Bible commentary after Bible commentary talking about war in the Middle East, focusing on specific cities and countries, Persia, Syria, Damascus, Jordan, Amman is mentioned very prominently. Sheba and Dedan are mentioned uh, very prominently in Scripture. And of course, those would be the United Arab Emirates who have launched uh, or who have put in place forward air bases on the southern border of Syria with the United States help. And I had another report that I really wanted to look at, and I think if I can find it here, uh, I'm going to read it. It has to do with the fact that our uh, president has authorized secret United States support for Syrian rebels. Did you know that? This is from Reuters, datelined August 1st. President Barack Obama has signed a secret order authorizing U.S. support for rebels seeking to depose Syrian President Bashar al-Assad and his government, U.S. sources familiar with the matter said. Now I could go on, I could, this is a very long story, but talk about a development. We have an election coming in a few weeks uh, in the United States. We have two wars developing in the Middle East, and we discover that uh, our own executive branch has secretly, and by the way, it's not much of a secret if it's being reported on by Reuters. Nevertheless, the headline is Obama authorizes secret U.S. support for Syrian rebels. So we are now in the fray. Wow. You know, if you believe in prayer at all, uh, it's time to lift up our country in prayer. And these are the events of the latter days. Things are happening in, in amazing ways that I have not seen in my entire lifetime. So uh, don't be discouraged. Keep looking up. <laughs>